Hi, welcome to this video on how to do a simple API call from Business Central and get our JSON reply. Hi, I'm Eric, and um, somebody asked me on the uh, on the Facebook forums, uh, what about a very very simple API call? And I just happened today to work with a uh, simple, very simple API call that I needed. So let me show you that and, and then let me show you how I implemented it. Um, this is, let's switch over to my screen, if you can see this. This is IPFI. So a very, very simple, a simple public IP address API. So I wanted to know what is the IP, the public IP address of my BC server or the server that's running in the cloud in case I need to open up for firewalls and stuff like that. And we can see here that this is kind of as simple as it gets. So we need to call this address and we'll get a JSON back with our IP address. Awesome. So let's do that. Uh, I'll fire up the trusty old Visual Studio code. I just created a blank project and we'll add a new file. Uh, IP address page. We'll create a new page here. What is my IP address? Uh, page, no page type is probably just a card. Um, Caption is, what is my IP address? This is certainly not editable, uh, but it should probably be searchable. So we'll add it as an administration page. Application area is all that goes with the uh, with users category. And then let's add some layout. Uh, and in the content, uh, let's go with, oh, see, this was wrong. I added some curly brackets here that I do not need to add. So that's why I couldn't get the, the IntelliSense to work because the area wasn't wrong. So let me try again, layout, area, content. Now it's working like butter. Uh, I'll add a field, IP. And the value for this one should probably go to get IP. So that's a function call. We haven't defined this yet. We can use our, oh, we're gonna use that one, but then let's see, we'll just add a application area and we'll add a caption. Uh, current IP address of BC server. How about that? Um, so let's go down to this one and then we'll add a function, a procedure called get IP. And we'll just do it in text right now because that's easy. Um, and um, so how do we do that? Let's go back to this page for a second. See, this is the call that we need to, to call. Um, put that in a comment here. So in order to call a web service, we will need the HTTP client. So let me go var client of type HTTP client, and we're going to get a response. So we might as well create one of those, an HTTP response message. Um, and then we know also that we're getting what we're getting back is actually a, a, some JSON. So we need some JSON. So we'll just call that J because we're in a hurry here. So that's a JSON object. Um, and uh, response, we need the response also as a text because we need to get from, I'll show you that. That's easier to explain than uh, easier to show than explain. So if client.get, we don't have to use the HTTP. So you see, we use the HTTP response message. We don't have to use the HTTP request message 
unless we need to add headers and uh, all sort of things. Um, so if we just want to do a simple get, we can do the get and the first parameter. See, now we're behind myself, so let's get it up here. So the the get just needs the URL and the, the response to put it in. So if that's okay, then we can ask that if response dot is success status code, then begin. So now we got the response and the response has a context and we would like to read that into our response txt. Um, so that's why we needed the text file. And if it sounds strange that we need to read it, that's because we're reading out of the content. But there was another video on in and out and read and write, very confusing setup sometimes. So you go watch that video if you like sort of an explanation for all the directions that the different variables can take here. Um, and we know that we need to return the text. So let's actually take our JSON and then we do another read. So we read into this one and we read out of it. So that's the, the confusion. Go, go check the other video on that one. Uh, it's a fun one. Um, so now we have created a JSON object here. And right now we don't care much about data uh, validation and see if, we, if this actually is a JSON and so on. So this is we keep it very simple, just in a few lines of code. So now we can see that we're getting a JSON object. That's the curly brackets. So that we know when there's a curly bracket is a JSON object. Uh, so inside that there's a field called IP with the address. So when I, whenever I work with JSON, I actually create, or I copy paste them, but I'll create it in this case, uh, some helper functions. So let me, let's, we want to exit the IP address. So I'll create a function called JSON text field, get JSON text field from our JSON object. And the text field we want is IP. Make sense? Um, so we need to create that procedure get JSON text field. And this one will get a, a JSON object. We know that. And the name of the member, we also know that. And it should return a text. And now I'm behind myself again, so I need to remember to move this up. Um, and we need a variable here because what we want to do is basically say that if, oh, that's our object, and if we can get member, but get is a is a Boolean based function, so it needs the key and a variable to put the result in. So we could just call that v for, I don't know why we call it v. Let's call it result, should call it result. Then, so we need to create a JSON token called result. Uh, so the JSON token is the 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 fit all the, the lowest element in, in the whole JSON structure. So it every entity within the JSON object model is a token, and then it could be an array or value or object. Uh, so we get a token out of this one. Um, so we get that, and then we can say that we want to exit our result dot as a value dot as a text and that's it so a very small few lines of code get json text field we get the the object that we want to get the field out of the the name of the field we get that json token out of it and then we convert that to a value and return it as a text so let's repeat before we press a five. We have a page. We added a field on the page that calls a function. The function calls our web service. When that goes well, uh, we will extract that information out of the JSON as shown field. So here goes nothing. We press a five. 
And I'm using my little trusty Docker uh, container. You've seen it in a lot of the other videos. Hopefully, go subscribe if you haven't seen all the other videos and you'll get notified whenever I create new videos that I got. Ah, so here's a classic. Uh, cannot build the page a number. So something is wrong. But what is wrong? Because I gave this 50710, but I think when I created my launch JSON, I said 5700. So that was a wrong startup page, startup object ID, which is a page in case startup object type is a page here. So let's try again to see if we are a little more lucky this time. Bam, the page has started, has opened, and this is indeed my public IP address. So let's take a quick look at this again before I, uh, I end the video. We uh, added a page, we created a function to call the web service, we created a function to extract that field from the JSON, and that was what we returned. And that is how you call a very, very simple API-based web service. Uh, we could have added, if it was another type of web service, there might be more parameters needed to the URL, or we need to do a post or patch or uh, put or stuff like that um, uh, to make the call a bit more complicated. And we might need to add more features like uh, procedures like the get JSON text field, like get JSON option, get JSON boolean, get JSON decimal, and so on. Um, but this is a great way of, of getting started with a web service. So with that in mind, that was just a quick way of showing how you can call a, a simple API from a Business Central. So until next time, have a wonderful day.